What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Dustin. And last time we were here, um, well, in the last video, all we did is fix a couple of warnings that kept popping up down here in the console. But as far as the game goes, last time we um, basically just made it so that this skeleton guy um, follows around our player. Uh, when we get outside of a range, he goes back to his original position. Um... Today, what I want to do is I want to give our player some incentive to actually avoid this guy. Um, so I want to make it so that our enemy can actually hurt our player. So, um, if you're enjoying the series, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Hit the bell notification icon. That way you get notified every time I upload a new video. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a new script. So in our scripts folder, I'm going to create a new C sharp script, and I'm going to call this hurt player. That is not how you spell player. Um, so I'm going to show you how to fix that really quick because there's two things you got to do if you haven't done this yet. So whenever you create a new script, um, this hurt player, whatever you name it, is going to pop up right here where it says public class hurt player mono behavior. You need to change this as well, otherwise you're gonna get some errors. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to the actual sp spelling of player. Still can't spell, just like that. I'm gonna let it compile for a second. I'm gonna open up in Visual Studio and I'm gonna change right here as well to player and save that script. So now that I have uh, this script named correctly, we're going to go down below the update function. I'm going to create a new function and I'm going to create one very similar to what we had in our area transition scripts. This private void on trigger enter 2D, we're going to use private void. Uh, on collision enter 2d so we can just type in void on collision enter 2d and I'm going to change this to other and I'm gonna go down in here um, first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and just add this script to our skeleton really quick before we forget. So I'm just going to click and drag that to our skeleton. And now if we go back in here, we can say if other dot uh, collider dot tag is equal to player. Well, then we want to do something. What do we want to do right now? Um, so for the moment, I just want to kill off the player. So a pretty easy way to do that is we could just say destroy other dot game object, just like that. So if we go ahead and save that, go back into Unity and hit play. <coughs> Now, if we, because we set our player to the player tag earlier for our area transitions, um, if we go over to our skeleton and just let him run into us, our player disappears. Now, we're also getting this error now. It says, missing reference exception, the object of type transform has been destroyed, but you are still trying to access this. And we're consistently getting this error, as you can see, every single frame it's thrown this error. So what this is referencing is our camera. Because our camera is missing the target transform because we just took it completely out of our game. So what we can do 
to fix that is instead of destroying the other game object, I'm just going to go ahead and comment this out. What we can say instead is we can say other dot game object dot set active, and we're going to set that to false like that. So what that's going to do, instead of destroying it, instead of getting it, getting rid of it completely from our hierarchy, what that's going to do is as soon as we hit our enemy, it's going to take our player object, and instead of deleting it, it's just going to check this little box right here, which makes it turn invisible, but it's still within our game. We can still use it inside of our game. It's just inactive. So let's go ahead and test that really quick. Let's hit play. Our error went away, and perfect. Our player is gone. It's still up in our hierarchy. We're not getting any errors. Awesome. So now we have another issue, um, and that is when we do get killed, we're just stuck here in this in this uh, screen. There's nothing that we can do. We can't move around. We can't do anything. So I want to be able to restart the game or restart the scene whenever we die. So an easy way to do that is we can say, um, first we need a reference up at the top here, a new tag. So we have this Unity Engine, System Collections, um, System Collections Generic. We're going to add one more to this. Just below that we're going to say using Unity Engine dot scene management. And what that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to manage our scenes. Um, so what we can say here is we can say scene manager dot load scene and the scene we want to load is going to be our test scene. So we can just say test. I think we did it with a lowercase T in test. Let me check this really quick. Oh no. So we got to make sure that this is spelled exactly correct. Just like that. And what that's going to do is when we hit play here, now as soon as our player gets killed, our scene should reload and we can start over. Just like that. Perfect. So now, we want to be able to do this not for just this scene, otherwise we're going to have to keep on writing this over and over every time uh, our player dies. So instead of using test here, <coughs> I want to say the scene that we want to load is from the scene manager. So we're going to say scene manager dot get active scene with two open and close brackets, and we're going to say dot name. And what that's going to do is it's going to look in the scene manager, it's going to look at our active scene itself, and it's going to pull the name of the scene that we're currently in, and it's just going to pop it in these brackets here for us. So we can go ahead and save that, and now it doesn't matter which scene we're in, that will still reload the level that we're on. Make sure that that still works, and perfect. So now, it seems like it's just really... It loads the level really fast, and I don't really like that. So what I want to do is I want to set that on a timer so that we can die, we can see that we can die, or we can see that we died, and then it will load the level. So what I want to do up here is I'm going to go up and create a couple of references. We're going to say, um, we will say... Um, public float, actually we can keep this private, so we can say private float, and we're going to call this wait to load, and like we learned in the last video, if we're setting a private float, we need to set the number to something, otherwise we're going to get a warning, so we're just going to say wait to load is equal to, let's say, 2 seconds, so 2F, just like that. Um, also, I'm going to create a private 
bool, and we're going to call this bool reloading. So now, what I want to do is first, when after our player dies, I want to set reloading to true. So reloading equals true. And then in our update function, I want to say if we are reloading, then I want wait to load uh, to minus equal time dot delta time. And what that's going to do is that's just going to take that to wait to load number and it's just going to start counting down. So now what we need to do is because it's going to continue to count down after it hits zero into the negatives, we need to say if wait to load is less than or equal to zero, then we want to take this scene manager line of code here cut it out, and paste it right there, just like that. So what's going to happen is we're going to collide with our player. Our player is going to be set to false in our hierarchy, and reloading will be set to true. As soon as reloading is set to true, then wait to load will start counting down. And if wait to load is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to reload the scene. So let's go ahead and test this out. Go ahead and save your script. Go back into Unity. Hit play. And let's go die. And then it waits for a couple of seconds and then reloads. Perfect. That is exactly what we want. So, um, I think that's all we're going to do in this video. Um, next time, we're going to create an actual health system for our player. We're going to give him some health. We're going to make it so that our enemy can damage our player, not just kill him instantly. Um, and then once we get to zero health, he will die and the scene will reload. So, um... If you're enjoying the series, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Make sure you hit that bell icon to get notified every time I upload a new video. And I will see you next time.